that I was taught as a white man was a sin of omission. Blacks were cut out of it. So I came to the point where I realized I don't even know who I am. So I decided if I'm going to know my own history, I'm going to have to go back to Mississippi and ask the hard questions of my family and of the people that I grew up with. There was a special group of people which I knew nothing about that I was introduced to and these were elderly women who were midwives. They weren't presently practicing. They were in their 80s and 90, 90s, but they had been midwives in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s. This was back in the days when white doctors would not touch black flesh. So blacks had to tend to themselves. And they depended upon uh, women who had these uh, remedies that had been passed down from generation to generation to generation. So I found these women with nobody to tell their stories to. And I was captivated by them. That they were some of the most spiritual people that I met. Every one of them said they were called by God to do what they did. And they didn't see their job as purely in the physical sense. They saw their job as being a servant of the community. And the more I looked at these people, I realized their traditions could be traced back not only through Jim Crow, but also back through the slave days, that on the plantation, the most powerful slave on the plantation were these midwives. And they were powerful because they were the only ones who treated black people, black slaves, as human beings, as mothers, as fathers, rather than as cattle, as, as livestock. I wanted a character that could embody those principles that I was discovering. Keep your lamp trimmed and a burning. Keep your lamp trimmed and a burning. Keep your lamp trimmed and a burning. Just like the light of God. Oh, sisters, keep your lamp trimmed and a burning. Keep your lamp a trimmed and a burning. Keep your lamp a trimmed and a burning. Just like the light of God. Oh. 